Hi, it's Shadow Hero 90 welcoming you to my show, Sexism in Movies and TV, where I more or less call out the insane level of misandry that these retards in Hollywood put in both film and television. Now, I've been doing this show for seven years. But the reason as to why what you'll be seeing this season could be worse is the fact that it's marketed towards children. A demographic that doesn't exactly know how the world works and can easily be misled. Now, what I reviewed in the season 6 finale was gynocentric, sexist, and misandric to a degree where there's no way I would be able to get through a third viewing of this piece of shit. I'm currently working on this book. In this book, I'm going to be proposing a theory. And part of that theory is that gynocentric shows, like uh, the ones that I will be attacking this season, are the reasons why young boys and young, man, and young men have such unbelievably low self-esteem. And it's because that all of this sexist bullcrap is marketed to kids. So, anyways, I welcome you to the seventh season of Sexism in Movies and TV. Hello YouTube! Welcome to the next episode of Sexism in Movies and TV. And in this episode, I'm going after the episode Which A Woman from Johnny Bravo. To be blunt, uh, this is the type of episode where I'm just going to say it. It's This is the recap part. I'm going to give you a quick recap of what goes on in the episode. And then I'm going to tell you every single thing wrong with that. Now, with that said, I'm basically going to give you the plot of this dumpster fire. Johnny flirts with a fortune teller, and it goes wrong as usual. She puts a hex on him that turns him into a woman. Basically, in a very hypocritical sense, sees how he treats women, which, yeah, the writers think that Johnny's behavior is negative, but really it's not, and that's something I'll get into later in the video. Gender-bent Johnny b makes some female friends, and allegedly learns his lesson. I say allegedly because he learns his lesson, but not really because because of the status quo. Gets turned back into a man. The end. And now the now I'm gonna address a few double standards that the idiots who wrote this dumpster fire didn't really think about when writing it. 
cut because if they did, if they were actually thinking, this episode of Johnny Bravo, which a woman, really, it comes off as a first draft. But the double standards that I'm about to point out in fact every one of these quote unquote morality tales about sexism that do this exact same plot and they do it just as bad. And that's the fact that for this plot to work 100% and not be hypocritical, you would you might have to turn the womanizer into a homosexual. Hell, even Family Guy, of all shows, was aware of this. That's why they took Quahog's resident pervert, Glenn Quagmire, and turned him into a woman as uh, a form of moral punishment for objectify for for legitimately objectifying women something he actually does because Johnny Bravo has never roofied someone and yeah in their Valentine's Day special they turned Quagmire into a woman to basically say, well, you now you're going to get a taste of your own medicine. But this is Family Guy, and they were parodying dumbass episodes like which a woman who try to have a gender-themed message and screw it up big time. Because, yeah... Um, Quagmire, the sex fiend that he is, legitimately fakes being a lesbian. And, yeah, here's the thing. Johnny Bravo's motivation throughout most of the show, excluding the better parts of Season 3 is the fact that he wants a girlfriend. Now, this is not sexist, but the show thinks happens to think it is. Yeah, and the thing is, the reason that Johnny Bravo never gets the girl in the end just boils down to two reasons. One, he's an egocentric megalomaniac. He thinks the world revolves around him, and two would be a lack of social skills. In all fairness, if you look at the good episodes, well, his grandpa, Pops, and his sidekick, Carl, are the, well, and the neighbor girl, little Susie, and his mother are the only people he's ever around. He's never really spent time outside of those four characters for any longer than one episode. So yeah, Johnny Bravo's behavior is more or less a mixture of uh, poor social skills and uh, a massive ego. He's not a misogynist, he's not a rapist, and all, in all hell, if you want to call Johnny Bravo sexist, then you might have to call every single character portrayed by Marilyn Monroe is sexist. You might have to say that Kelly and Lisa from Saved by the Bell are sexist. You'd have to call Minerva Mink sexist. Same thing with the Disney Princess lineup, even though Disney is currently trying to change that. You'd have to call High School Musical sexist. Same thing with Twilight.
this Disney character as well, and calling them sexist for wanting boyfriends, or calling their boyfriends sexist for wanting a relationship with any of these characters, or wanting to marry them, well, that would be downright hypocritical, because characters like Rose Quartz, this psycho, this idiot, are actually characters that the libtards actually like. Characters like Wonder Woman, Shadow Cat, Miss Martian, and Scarlet Witch are actually superheroes. And they fall directly into that category. Hell, if it wasn't for a man entering her life that she had a crush on, Wonder Woman would never have left her island. And this is the superhero that feminists are always going on and on about how great she is. So if you want to call a character like Johnny Bravo sexist, you might want to say Wonder Woman is just as sexist, if not more. Because the two movies she got literally could not take sex out of the equation. Every part of it was gendered. The evil villain who worked for one of the one of America's enemies in World War One was an evil man. Ares was an evil man. But Wonder Woman spared Dr. Poison for being a woman. Yeah, I'm just going to say it. Wonder Woman movies cannot separate gender identity politics from the story, making it far more sexist than any episode of Johnny Bravo. Okay, and one thing that is clearly hypocritical... Over the years, people have criticized Johnny Bravo, calling it misogyny, saying this guy's a sexist, when basically he just wants a girlfriend. To be blunt, um, I actually have to ask, why is it sexist when Johnny Bravo does it, but when any of the characters who appear on screen act like a, uh, well, overall piece of shit, or a manipulator, or a criminal, or just a jackass, because... They, in general, want a romantic relationship. It's somehow wrong. Answer. Because the libtards actually like these characters. And... If you were to call Johnny Bravo sexist then the same thing would apply to characters like the Mystery Sister, Rose Quartz, Princess Genocide here, and every friggin' bitch in her family. This also affects female superheroes as well. I mean, the libtards aren't going to say that these characters are misandric because they're freaking superheroes. And they get support by the type of lunatics who get on the internet and go on and on and on about how great these characters are. Even though in recent decades 
They act like villains most of the time! Hello YouTube! Welcome to the next episode of Sexism in Movies and TV. And in this episode, I'm going after the episode Which A Woman from Johnny Bravo. To be blunt, uh, this is the type of episode where I'm just going to say it. It's This is the recap part. I'm going to give you a quick recap of what goes on in the episode. And then I'm going to tell you every single thing wrong with that. Now, with that said... I'm basically going to give you the plot of this dumpster fire. And now the now I'm going to address a few double standards that the idiots who wrote this dumpster fire didn't really think about when writing it. Because if they did, if they were actually thinking this episode of Johnny Bravo, which a woman, really, it comes off as a first draft. But the double standards that I'm about to point out, in fact, every one of these quote-unquote morality tales about sexism that do this exact same plot, and they do it just as bad. And that's the fact that for this plot to work 100% and not be hypocritical, you'd at, you might have to turn the womanizer into a homosexual. Hell, even Family Guy of all shows, was aware of this. That's why they took Quahog's resident pervert, Glenn Quagmire, and turned him into a woman as uh, a form of moral punishment for, objectify for, for legitimately objectifying women, something he actually does because Johnny Bravo has never roofied someone. And, yeah, in their Valentine's Day special, they turned Quagmire into a woman to basically say, well, you now you're going to get a taste of your own medicine. But this is Family Guy, and they were parodying dumbass episodes like which a woman who try to have a gender themed message and screw it up big time because yeah um quagmire the sex fiend that he is legitimately fakes being a lesbian and yeah here's the thing Johnny Bravo's motivation throughout most of the show, excluding the better parts of season three, is the fact that he wants a girlfriend. Now, this is not sexist, but the show thinks happens to think it is. Yeah, and the thing is... The reason that Johnny Bravo never gets the girl in the end just boils down to two reasons. One, he's an egocentric megalomaniac. He thinks the world revolves around him. And two, would be a lack of social skills. In all fairness, if you look at the good episodes, well, his grandpa, Pops, and his sidekick, Carl, are the, well, and the neighbor girl, little Susie, and his mother are the only people he's ever around. He's never really spent time outside 
of those four characters for any longer than one episode. So yeah, Johnny Bravo's behavior is more or less a mixture of uh, poor social skills and uh, a massive ego. He's not a misogynist. He's not a rapist. In all, in all hell, if you want to call Johnny Bravo sexist, then you might have to call every single character portrayed by Marilyn Monroe is sexist. You might have to say that Kelly and Lisa from Saved by the Bell are sexist. You'd have to call Minerva Mink sexist. Same thing with the Disney Princess lineup, even though Disney is currently trying to change that. You'd have to call High School Musical sexist. Same thing with Twilight this Disney character as well, and calling them sexist for wanting boyfriends or calling their boyfriends sexist for wanting a relationship with any of these characters or wanting to marry them, well, that would be downright hypocritical because characters like Rose Quartz, this psycho, this idiot, are actually characters that the libtards actually like. Characters like Wonder Woman, Shadow Cat, Miss Martian, and Scarlet Witch are actually superheroes. And they fall directly into that category Hell, if it wasn't for a man entering her life that she had a crush on, Wonder Woman would never have left her island. And this is the superhero that feminists are always going on and on about how great she is. So if you want to call a character like Johnny Bravo sexist, you might want to say Wonder Woman is just as sexist, if not more. Because the two movies she got literally could not take sex out of the equation. Every part of it was gendered. The evil villain who worked for... It, one of the one of America's enemies in World War One was an evil man. Ares was an evil man, but Wonder Woman spared Doctor Poison for being a woman. Yeah, I'm just gonna say it. Wonder Woman movies cannot separate gender identity politics from the story making it far more sexist than any episode of Johnny Bravo. Okay, and one thing that is clearly hypocritical. Over the years, people have criticized Johnny Bravo, calling it misogyny, saying this guy's a sexist, when basically he just wants a girlfriend. To be blunt, um, I actually have to ask, why is it sexist when Johnny Bravo does it, but when any of the characters who appear on screen act like a, uh, well, overall piece of shit or a manipulator, or a criminal, or just a jackass, because they, in general, want a romantic relationship, it's somehow wrong. 
Answer, because the libtards actually like these characters, and if you were to call Johnny Bravo sexist, then the same thing would apply to characters like the Mystery Sister, Rose Quartz, Princess Genocide here, and every friggin' bitch in her family. This also affects female superheroes as well. I mean, the libtards aren't going to say that these characters are misandric because they're freaking superheroes. And they get support by the type of lunatics who get on the internet and go on and on and on about how great these characters are. Even though, in recent decades, they act like villains most of the time. Okay, I'm going to say it. All of these man-hating pieces of trash on the internet constantly bash Johnny Bravo, calling him a misogynist, because he's really quick to flirt with women. Marin from Dragon Ball Z basically flirts with anything she knows is not a woman, and to be blunt, the show never implies that she's sexist. Just stupid. Like I always say, Anime constantly gets this stuff right, where American TV is constantly getting it wrong. Johnny Bravo flirts with every woman he sees. Marin here flirts with every man she sees. And I kind of pointed out the hypocrisy comparing Johnny Bravo to a ton of female characters that at least appear on American TV, whether it be adaptation or the actual source material. And it is hypocritical to call the to call Johnny Bravo sexist, but not say that well not accuse the characters that were listed of being man-hating brats or only wanting a relationship so that they could be provided for because they're too lazy to get jobs and work for themselves. Because despite what both Twitter and Tumblr tell you, flirting is not sexist. It's not catcalling, and when you basically regulate or basically say that flirting and catcalling are the same thing, I, I mean, someone smart would basically just come to the conclusion that, well, when you think about it, the women who are being cat called are actually being complimented so maybe some of these guys should change up their strategy instead of complimenting them do the traditional cat calling and replace what you what they were going to say with a flurry of insults i have a really unique uh, feeling that a lot of these uptight bitches would desperately want to go back to the way these guys were acting before they started hurling out insults. Okay, and I said I was going to bring this up, but 
So I am. There's kind of a reason as to why this specific episode never works. And yes, I know it's because the idiots think that the male characters are treating the female characters badly, but here's the thing. Whenever any idiot feels it's necessary to pull this stunt, it kind of comes into problematic territory, as even though the character himself has been turned into a woman, he or she, or in this case, she, still has the mind of a man, and still is attracted to men, which is why Family Guy's parody of the concept on their Valentine's Day special was actually so funny, because... Yeah, Quagmire was turned into a woman as part of some brain-dead morality tale, but he takes advantage of it by pretending to be a lesbian. So, in other words, if you want this type of, of morality tale to work, even though there's no morality in it, you would actually have to make the man who gets turned into a woman go from being attracted to women to being attracted to men. To be blunt, they basically did not change Johnny's thought process in this so, he's kind of a lesbian, and that's not really me, um, uh, grasping for straws. When anyone pulls this crap, that's what they do, because they're not thinking through the implications. And, to be fair, this came out in 2003, a time when, yeah, you couldn't have a lesbian on TV. This sort of thing might work now, but with the way that quote-unquote morality tales like this are written, and the fact that they would never do this to a female character, um, it just shows that something like this is just the studio trying to be woke or trying to win an Emmy or trying to get brownie points because they think that's the road to an Emmy. And it just boils down to the fact that, yeah, it's not going to work. There's no twist of logic that can make it work. There's no deranged way you could write something like this in on a show that would be aimed at kids to make it work unless the target of, uh, well, the gender swap was a rapist or you were going to go both ways and do stuff like this to female characters, which we all know that these companies are way too terrified to do. This type of episode never works because it wants to show you the plight of women. But when they do it with one of these gender swap stories, it basically comes off as a plight that does not exist. 
I'm not saying that women don't have problems. Both men and women have problems. But when you show them in such an over-the-top, cartoony manner, it basically comes off as... These are just spoiled brats who are getting worked up over nothing. Yeah, women get getting hit on by creeps is the only problem we see in, uh, well, this episode, and I'm just gonna say it. Women get hit on by creeps in the real world. Big fucking deal. Any idea what men have to go through in the United States alone? Let me think of some problems off the top of my head. One, unfair divorce laws. Two, if a man is accused of being a rapist or a sexual deviant or sexually harassing a woman, he's instantly seen as guilty and turned into a pariah and will lose his reputation and most likely everything else he has. Three, the unfair domestic abuse laws. A woman could easily say that a man hit her and will be believed, no questions asked. If a weak, scrawny man gets punched by a woman, it's seen as comedy. The idea that only a man can be a rapist. And if a woman is... Well, if a woman rapes a man, basically anyone who brings it up outside of, say, South Park will turn it into a joke. The only time men being raped is ever seen as bad is if it's is if the rapist is another man. Something uh, that American TV actually needs to learn isn't funny. Four. The idea that all men are perverts, only want sex, and only and are only interested in sex. And that comes with the double standard that women can dress however they want, and if anything bad comes from it, it's somehow not their fault. If a man does the exact same thing, well, he gets blamed and labeled a racist. Number five. The fact that society takes anything that women say at face value, while if you're a man and basically something bad happens to you, a lot of times you have to bend over backwards to prove it. And sex. You are not allowed to punch women but they're allowed to physically smack you around like a damn piñata for the most dumbest and pettiest of reasons. I mean, at this point, um, I can't believe even looking in the same direction as a woman doesn't count as sexual harassment. It probably will in five years' time, thanks to social media. But yeah, if any gender on Earth has a plight that deserves to be seen, it would be the men of America. The men who founded this country and not to mention all the men who fought in the military to help keep our nation safe. And all the men who invented all of the devices 
that revolutionize the modern world. The ones that make women's life so easy. All sorts of things. Um, uh, Amazon, iPhone, streaming, etc. All these things that these modern women, aka spoiled brats, just seem to take for granted. Despite what I'm going to hear in the comments, men did invent the bulk of the modern world. And without them, these spoiled women would not at all be living the, comf the comfortable lifestyles that they live in the modern day. So yeah, if there is a gender who has a plight that deserves to be seen, it is the American man who built everything around them and who more or less uh, get harassment rather than credit for their accomplishments. Episodes of cartoons like Witch A Woman from Johnny Bravo are pathetic. I'm going to end this review by saying they're nothing short of companies trying to get social brownie points and ironically enough hurting their message a lot more than they could ever help it. As this falls in line with the CSI effect. They more or less just show a cartoony, over-the-top rendition of what they're talking about, and they make the topic they're covering completely one-sided, implying this sort of thing could never happen to a man. Especially since outside of this, women do everything I just mentioned and far worse. And this is where I am officially ending this review. I may be an atheist, but cartoons with the same exact moral of Johnny Bravo, which a woman can rot in hell.